unless there's something else that we don't know is occurring but yeah dude very podcast episode freaking 33 it's kind of like you know it's kind of like amazing 33 episodes of the out of the possible i don't know the possible 52 53 i think so yeah i mean damn is, yeah it, i mean it's just a thing dude like the grind is actually kind of real so hey props to like you know everyone every guest you know pr- pretty much everyone carrying my content every friday night you know <laughs> oh hey thank you <laughs> but yeah dude for a podcast episode 33 with you know grievous uh thanks dude i appreciate it so if anyone doesn't know i pulled the train okay i kind of pulled the train so that's why we're kind of an hour late so yeah basically i you know i just woke up (laughs) from a not really just just woke up but like from a nap that is you know i was i just ate food right and then motherfucker nap yeah yeah dude I, i i i just ate dinner and then i fell asleep dude so yeah there we go that's your explanation so yeah like honestly that's kind of you know what i've been doing but yeah i mean pretty much dude like so for me okay and then i'll explain the week too dude like so essentially what happened was this week has been pretty crazy to be honest so number one right number one so if anyone doesn't know you know the guy that we don't like from work is already gone so that's the you know biggest w of my life fuck you you know goodbye goodbye rip bozo you know rip bozo yeah like goodbye rip bozo you know because i mean motherfuckers kind of hard to like work with and we don't talk about people who le- who left the company but like dude honestly so last like tuesday you know and then we were supposed to like do some stuff and then not not we like me and grievous but like the company itself so what happened was they just brought me aside and then yo we're training you for kind of like this you know and then i'm like yeah sure so you know took some calls for part of it and then i had to like do invoicing and shit so I mean, the random bookkeeping stuff, like, honestly, I don't know, but, like, it was kind of fun, but it's kind of also annoying. It was kind of fu- fun counting money, or, you know, depositing money, you know, and then checking things out, you know, in your, into your system. Because you wish it was yours? Yeah, that's a bad thing. Just like, oh. <laughs> dude, dude, dude that, that's the entire bad thing, is it's like... Dude, I'm counting. I'm counting the money that's not for me. So <laughs> that's kind of like the most annoying thing, right? If if it's like you're a bookkeeper or like you know you do invoicing and and stuff, yet it's not you. You know, you're my own money. So you know, I mean, it is what it is at at the very end. But at the end of the day, you know, I wish that you know it was my own money. So, yeah, dude, I mean, I've been kind of, like, juggling between kind of, like, different hats as well. So, there's that. But, yeah, dude, how was your week? It was good, man. I just, uh, a lot of work as well. I uh, got a lot of shit done, uh, development-wise. Um, nice. Yeah. And, yeah, it's been really busy with that and, and streaming as well. Um, what do you do, though, with uh, for work? Yeah, so no, basically, I do industrial trade sandblasting. So basically, you know, I sandblast, you know, so, some of the things that we're going to sell. And afterwards, I finish them as well, you know, when we, I have a time. But they've kind of like transferred me into like a customer specialist kind of thing or 
more so as well on the not like the back because you know there's like a back end and then the, there's the back back end you, you know what i mean so like the back end would be like you know you're interacting with the customers basically you know you talk to them right and then the back back end is basically you know you organizing the supplies right and then doing supplies for them so basically there's that i mean cool to be honest it's kind of cool but there's also times where you know it it's very different because no offense people with office jobs okay please don't cancel me okay i like you you know please deposit to a chimes on this channel you know we're kind of out of mud so but dude so for me, when I when I did an office job, I don't know if you ever did, but sometimes office jobs are resident sleepers. They're yeah, like in the form that you only sit there for like eight hours, dude. I cannot handle that shit. Like I really cannot handle sitting for like eight hours. Like I have to stand, I have to go somewhere, you know, check check things out, you know, sometimes touch grass, you know, you know. I mean, <laughs> there's also little grass outside of our, you know, our office, so there's that. But, like, yeah, I mean, th that's kind of, like, part of it, but it's kind of also hard to, like, juggle different um hats as well. But, yeah, dude, uh, how, so, how is streaming, man? Dude, you put in the long hours. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Well, sorry, yeah, I've been doing, like, four or two hours uh, this week. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, playing God of War and, and Apex, dude. <laughs> dude. I was... Okay, because I... Okay, I never played God of War, right? So, if you're gonna tell a person, or if you're gonna sales stock a person into playing God of War, what would you tell them? Um, I don't know, the combat's pretty... Uh, pretty nice uh it kind of has like i don't know some people have compared the difficulty to like like elden ring or souls games so yeah, yeah i don't think it's like nearly this close but it there is some like difficult moments in the game for sure yeah but uh the combat is where it's at it, there's a lot of sick moves and the uh gore is crazy yeah, you know, yeah. a demon's head or whatever the fuck, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. um demon's yeah. head Dude, okay, speaking of which, I just found out this news, okay, and I don't know how. And, okay, this is not in the, you know, in the whole articles that I sent you, so I'll put it in the chat. <coughs> but dude, imagine a Twitch streamer playing Elden Ring, and then they actually didn't take any damage. Like a speedrunner? <laughs> yeah. It's like, for two hours, they finish Elden Ring. And it's like, it's only it's kind of like speedrunners that's actually like insane. Like, you know, thanks to like, you know, some key changes and everything. But like, it's like a no hit run that took almost three hours. You know, that's I, crazy. Yeah, and I was like, dude, it's like damageless Elden Ring, okay? Dude, beating Elden Ring is already tough. Beating a Dark Souls game is already tough. Now, make it no damage, okay? And a speed run? Dude, yeah. that's actually insane. I'm... You know... I think there was no uh, hit runs in the past with other Souls games. But uh, I, there hasn't been one on Elden Ring yet. Yeah. I, that's pretty crazy, dude. Three hours is pretty fast, too. If you think about it, this guy, like, went through the game, right? And he found uh, what, like, what points he can get away with, with, like, not taking any damage. Yeah. And he found it was, like, within this time limit and just, like, and just did it. That's that's insane, dude. That's, like, determination, too. It's, like, really inspiring. Dude, you know, you know the biggest L though, it, on this thing, is he, you know, th this person, right? Is called Se Seiki or Seiki Sh Sh Sekiro Shadow on tw on Twitter. Dude, yeah. basically, he did it, and you know, under three hours. 
so he cannot perform on Steam. <laughs> he can't what on Steam? He, he can't perform it on on Steam. Ah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that's kind of like one of the most you know one of the most thing that I would do is I would speed speed the real game, do it for like two hours, refund that shit. A, I got free content. Anyway, so basically imagine that. you're that good. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the speed run every game first try. <laughs> yeah, the the thing though is you have to like realize also that if it's that kind of thing, like first touch, right? Is it has to be done first touch. You know, it has to be done, like, immediately. So, you know, first run, no errors, boom. But yeah, dude. Honestly, that's kind of, like, one of the biggest things is doing... I mean, okay, I, I know people will say Elden Ring, Resident Sleeper, or whatever. But they actually, like, enjoy enjoy people play Elden Ring, God of War, you know, or you... Or you know, you eating your toenail. I don't know, dude. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's very different from what we've kind of. I mean, it's that much different from play from seeing people play Dark Soul games. But other than that, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I streamed for almost three hours last night, and that's my entire stream for the week. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, and it's then, big time for you. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's actually big, big time. Because the thing is, it's actually like a real strong man clap. Because sometimes it just feels that I can't do two hours or three, even three hours, right? So like three hours suck already, and then you know, two hours, it, it's just like perfect. It's you know, I'm well rested. I can veg easily. And then you know, it is what it is. You you don't need anything anymore, you know. And I stream, you know, it's a W. But yeah, I I mean, in the future, hopefully, I stream more hours. But yeah, dude, it's, it's hope. Hopefully, you know, it we get to the point where we actually stream more hours. But yeah, so I mean, we've got things to you know talk about, you know. There's literally that. So, I mean, we'll jump right into them and we'll see how, you know, they go. Because, I mean, it's pretty rough out here, <laughs> you know, on this platform. But, you know, if anyone doesn't know, right? Tencent, right? A anyone who doesn't know Tencent, usually they know about, like, you know, owning lots of, you know, the bigger name industry and the whole world, right? So Tencent is shutting down, shutting down rather, its gaming service or game streaming service that you know that they latestly kind of like wanted to retreat because it in the big tech in the face of like the sweeping crackdown on you know regulations and it's basically slowed down the growth of you know some of the country's most powerful internet companies so ba basically the streaming platform you know penguin esports announced that they would terminate all services on june 7 and then it's it's just signing basically business development change which if you don't know usually what happens it's they got broke or like whatever but just nine months ago antitrust regulated regulators prevented tencent to like merge from or from merging the companies with other interests you know, on other companies of interest in the live streaming platform so you know pink if you guys don't know it's almost similar as you know the world's version of twitch where you know it has like streaming rights and then it has like games on you know in some countries like honor of kings and you know league of legends so yeah i mean this is kind of like because to think about it right so there's a lot of like people who and they don't know about it but 
for some people, they only think that if you're streaming, it's only like three things. It's only Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. That's pretty, that's pretty much it, right? And then for some, if you're like Ninja, you stream on, mix, on Mixer, you know, Dench. But other than that, dude, it's actually kind of crazy that if they're going out, you know, because a lot of like companies too, where, you know, let's say in Korea, there's like Africa TV or like other things such as like this, like, and then they have other like streaming platforms. Dude, it's actually pretty big because one of the things that, you know, these people could have done is, you know, people could have leveraged it and then sign, sign with, let's say, Twitch and, you know, have that either instant affiliate, instant partnership, I don't know. But yeah, dude, it's really insane that this fundamental changes and challenges comes to, like, Tencent. So, I mean, the company will still exist. You know, they have their games. They just won't have the streaming or their streaming platform. So, yeah. Yeah. It's actually that, pretty insane. Yeah. Th this company was, I remember this company was huge and now they're getting like cracked down pretty hardcore and seeing moves like this where they're, you know, shutting down uh, their, their uh, gaming service, uh, streaming service is just like, you just like see what you know the result of everything that's happening over there in China. Yeah, uh, it's insane. Yeah, and then it's actually like pretty insane that you know people have actually put out a lot of effort too when in, in regards to their own platforms. So you know you build your own brand, right? And then now mm -hmm. since you know they're selling it or. No, they're gonna go out of business, right? And then a lot of people would think, let's say, for example, you know, Twitch, right? For the love of God, right? Hopefully it doesn't close, you know. But if it does, you know, you guys know that, you know, the name Frank Freaking Wolf or like Grievous or like any other names, like maybe, you know, Trainwreck CV and anything, they kind of like own some of the rights to it. So they have actually the right to sell sell the names and the branding. So, you know, it's actually pretty big. And hopefully that they, you know, they could have some point of, like, leverage to it. But I don't know, dude. Hopefully some of them transfer to, like, to, like, Twitch. Because honestly, and this is just me, I feel that the eight, you know, I mean, we know the NA streamers. We know that e some of the EU streamers. There's some that, you know, the Land Down Under, K Cricky, I don't know. Th those kind of like streamers, right? But yeah, dude, like, we don't know much about the, the kind of like the region. Or it's kind of like untapped, right? So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully, they transfer to like Twitch. Cause yeah, I know. Like, um, and so like it, the reason why they're shutting down this uh, streaming service mm -hmm. is because of tax invasion within the state. That's so like that is insane, dude. That one point three four billion. Yeah, of tax evasions. Yeah, two hundred two hundred eleven million in USD. Oh, like that, like it's like no. Is this why uh, ten cents in like deep shit right now? <laughs> yeah, most probably because like they also technically own like, a lot of suits. I don't know, man. They 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 own a lot of stuff, right? And then not just like the streaming platform, but like games, right? So like, good luck, good lord. Like, I mean. If you're, like, tax evading on that kind of thing, right? I mean, think about... I'm thinking about it, too. So, when, when it comes to, like, bigger companies doing this, hopefully, you know, I mean, there's gonna be a compensation for those who stream there, but, like, good luck. Because some of them, some of them have, like, livelihoods, in, you know, at stake, right? And they can't wait to, like, you know... Either not necessarily transfer, but
but like do something else probably so you know good luck to those kind of to people who stream there yeah i i could just like assume too that a lot of the content creators streaming on there is just um you know creating content and not really thinking about like the whole tax situation mm -hmm. and i think that's a common thing even with twitch uh well at least early on yeah uh, people didn't know what to do with their taxes and they, they were always stressed out and it's a little bit better now with like uh, twitch creating uh tax forms and like providing that kind of information to you a little more streamlined but um Man, it, it, it gets dicey when you're a self-employed or like a, a self-owned like type of person where you're you're a CEO or whatever and you have to pay business taxes. Um and I, I guarantee Tencent didn't figure that out. You know, they didn't think about it. They're just thinking, put put the platform out there, get the content creators, and then we'll get the juice and then we'll figure out all that later. But it's like you gotta figure out that like immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you have to like you have to kind of like figure it out correctly now because people you know people stream in there and you know there's also the uh, uh, there's also the bigger ones and then there's also the you know the smaller ones right and then the bigger ones now would be either going into like another platform and they have to like start over again unless like they had they had like previously a youtube where they could just stream in there they have to find another website where where they actually could stream you know so we'll see about that but i don't necessarily you know think that they would be transferring to twitch anytime soon hopefully they do though if they think that twitch is for them but yeah dude it's really crazy that this happened and tencent you know some people like your Valorant games, you know, like Zoro, who's kind of like Perma Silver. But I don't know, dude. We'll, we'll <laughs> see about it. Dude, uh, speaking of about uh, speaking of Valorant, did you uh, see the whole iShow Speed thing going on? No, not yet, dude. So like, um, he he was in a in a Valorant game, just doing what he normally does on stream, which is just go off on comms right <coughs> mm -hmm. um and everyone gets it right anyone that talks gets it and especially especially girls yep. if a girl talks he goes ham and that's what he did this uh on valorant and they uh, the the other player didn't sound like they were too happy with it and he he was just like he was just like going heavy on the situation and so everyone trying to cancel him for him just you know do uh, crank content doing what he normally does i i i feel like it's a weird situation because what he did uh, what he said was kind of crazy mm -hmm. but at the same time if you look at it the guy is just creating content and trying to like uh, you know um uh, entertain his audience yep. which is what he normally does i think it's just now that he's playing valorant he's he doesn't know the type of community he's getting into this is like people are are ready to cancel you ready to put, put out twit longers on you <laughs> so I, he, he came out with like an apology video supposedly yep and i don't know he he seemed like very uh genuine at least as i can tell as far as i can tell um and i don't know people are still not happy about it and i just like man what do you do in that situation you just gotta just move on right stop giving it energy at that point and just you know change Maybe change and show show your audience that you're getting better. But like, man, poor kid, dude. <laughs> He's just like dealing with this on the internet so young. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, because right now it says that he, you know this guy is perma banned on Valorant and as well as all other Riot games. So you know, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, imagine Riot ban banning sexism. You know? <laughs> that's the most unironic, you know, ironic thing in like 2022 when a company that's, that's funny, known right? that's known for actual rate, you know, actual sexism bans you for sexism. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's like what? It's like you know, psych. Oh, not just me, but like you know, it's kind of like the one of the ultimate squad W stuff, but. 
dude, it's like, yes, there are things that, you know, you, you've said, and, and everyone could have said in before that they could have been canceled, but in this type of things, I don't believe that someone necessarily, you know, needs to be canceled for this. I mean, for one, I mean, apologies is always the first step, right? You apologize, you know, and then you move on, right? But the fact of the matter is in this type of th like things, like why, why would people actually, you know, need to cancel them? And I feel that for some people, it's, it's really unf unfair for that kind of like, treatment because, you know, people nowadays too, right? It's like they get the idea that we need to punish this person and then have this person get accountable for his actions for what he did was wrong. And it's just feel it just feels that it's so unhealthy, you know, like. In a way, I feel that it's unhealthy because number one, you know, it's it's the internet, right? Yes, anything you say kind of becomes permanent, you know, like even this, you know, even like what I, what we say here, it's going to be almost either permanent unless, you know, I edit it or I unpublish the VOD or, you know, something happens, then it's going to be permanent. But like, aside from that, you know, it's it's those people who you know I won't say normies or anything, but like you go on Twitter and then they cancel you for something, right? And even Asman said said this that it's kind of like an unhealthy culture that we do this, and he feels like it doesn't actually help anybody, and he, you know he says it doesn't actually make the world any better it doesn't even improve sexism online because once you cancel let's say a person for let's say blatant sexism right you don't make a room for any reconciliation or any how do you call it how do you, there's a proper term for it like you don't actually make a room for rehabilitation there you go because it just sucks that way, you know, and then, hey, ca let's cancel this person, boom, done. It's like, I don't necessarily see the need to for the person to be to get canceled, but like, I don't know, we'll, we'll see about that. Because hopefully this, this thing gets reversed. Hopefully. Yeah. And plus it's just like a weird mentality to just like, uh, take out your pitchforks and, and, and burn this person at the stake right it's just like i don't know maybe express that you know that that stuff wasn't cool and maybe they can take something from that and learn from it if not then just like it is what it is you know yeah. we all have our own lives we gotta fucking learn our, um through these experiences and so does that kid right yeah because um, people could grow and i'm on the idea that people could grow and then and then people could change like how you know they were five or six years from now or like even like a year from now that they could change but like in this way when you cancel a person just because they said something that you didn't necessarily like and you know and some people perceived it as cancelable dude you know like i mean for now i'm prepared for a lot of like Twit longers and th and things, but you know if that happens to me, dude, I would be devastated. I w I, w I would never stream anymore. So you know, because even then, cancel culture is one of the worst things that you could do. You know, especially yeah. it's almost like internet murder. So, dude, I mean, rip bozo speed, but come on, man. Hopefully, he gets to like a point where it's. A healthy environment for him too yeah. and take please take note right i'm not siding with like you know i'm not siding with him i you know i'm just saying that there's a there's a way of rehabilitation for this so yeah
Uh, it's just like a terrible situation for for him and for like the people that feel offended by it. You know, um, when Polly his attention is not to offend anyone and just to make people laugh. Yeah. You know? Yeah, dude. Actually, you said it right because in this type of things, like you're not even like involved in that same you know clip or anything so what make, makes you feel that pitchforks is you know is actually like needed you know what i mean because in a way people just need to or people need to rather take note that they don't always have the right to be offended so you know it's like yeah. oh they they said this capital d call or something you know like i'm offended you know it's basically the internet nowadays so yeah hopefully you know everything comes well and it comes good you know like let's make this world a better place forehead so yeah 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 it's like uh it's like you ever uh have that friend that like uh dated like a girl or, or or even a guy uh dated a girl mm-hmm. um and a girl dated a guy and they they get mad at you for playing a song or something like oh that reminds me of of james or that reminds me of gloria or <laughs> yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and you're like well well, what the hell? Like, why should I have to change the song if you, if you're feeling offended by this? Like, because you you had that intimate uh, relationship with them and, and shared that intimate uh, thing with the song. And why do I have to suffer from it? You know what I mean? Why do I have to? Uh, yeah. Th- does that make sense? I yeah. probably not. <laughs> no, no, no. Because a lot of people would be like, "Yo," because you know there there was, and I'll tell you I'll tell you a story, right? I mean, and, well, hold on, hold on. Before you say anything, I don't want to say that I don't. I'm not. I didn't think the what he said about women is, is okay at yeah. all. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like me too. Like there, there are things that you know that you would say that you know you don't actually mean. Like when I say that women belong in the kitchen, I don't intend that <laughs> it's actually true. Okay, please. Are they please. stuck in the kitchen? Let's be real. I mean, they don't, you know, if you're in the kitchen, you don't need clocks, but like, come on, dude. I, I don't actually mean it. But on, honestly, you know, there are some things that, you know, sometimes it's just a joke, you know, but, you know, it's just, when I say it's just a joke, I don't, in, you know, I don't intend it with any ill intent. So, you know, hello? You know, it, you know what I think the main issue with him is saying all that stuff mm-hmm. was like I feel like he doesn't commonly say those things is I feel like that kid is like stressed that dude grinds like every time I go on YouTube that dude's live mm-hmm. have you have you seen this like I feel like he's just putting too much hours and he's just saying whatever could, like first thing came to his head dude yeah <laughs> I, I'm telling you, honestly I'm telling you it's the the people that put a lot of effort in this in their streaming that gets almost cancelled a lot. Like Yeah, they put too much time. Like sometimes that they put so much time and effort into like their streaming or or you know their streaming careers, you know, job omega lol J Omega Lol B. But it's sometimes like that, right? Like e- even, you know, I mean, I don't really want to discuss this, but I mean, feel free to do whatever. But you know, and Twitter, it's like, yeah, you know, XCC did this for like, you know, in 2017 or 18, and then someone just reacted to it. You know, some old fart to re- reacted to it. So I don't know, dude. Like, yo, yo, women. You know, XCC had this take about women, blah 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 blah. You know, but he changed. You know, look look at him, and he's grinds literally a lot of hours streaming in this freaking platform. If he's not like a seventy k Andy or like an eighty k Andy, he's usually on top of the leaderboards. Uh, you know, yeah. specifically not just on, you know, not not just on viewership, but on a- actually our stream. So you know, 
it's it it's just crazy to me that a lot of people you know put a lot of effort into it but at the very least you know there has to be a point where there has to be a rehabilitation you know cycle you know yeah that's just me also on a side note you know dude my armpit actually smells so good and i feel <laughs> like dude so I, ha- I had a new do by the way i had a new do base oh that's what we're calling it do yeah Not- <laughs> yeah and then so whenever i use it it's like ooh la la and then specifically right now it's just like i don't know it feels comfortable i don't know man but yeah and anyway so in other news <laughs> are you trying to tell me to put on deodorant i mean you could man because i mean the last time we talked about deos somebody tried to sell not really sell but like somebody's tried to like sell me you know when you have like balls sweating right if any you know in the early, on your balls yeah like dude, <laughs> it's like no there's like a powder they say that you could put in your balls to actually avoid it swelling it's, it's like a ball cleaner yeah or something yeah it's, it, and then it's like for me i was like yo if, if that happens because you know i usually you know for people who wear boxers and who you know kind of like sweat a lot you kind of like need it so you know last time we talked about that was yeah anyway moving on dude twitch the greatest you know most undisputed world heavyweight champion of the streaming platform you know they're cracking down on the policy form the mature tag so twitch is testing like a major change let's say for the mature content tag and they say that you know it's not yet confirmed by twitch by the way although they they approve it but it could allow platform broadcasters to put to potentially sexually have like suggestive content without the consequences if they abide if they abide to like the pending guidelines so twitch has had like long you know we have all everyone has like a mature tag you know and it gates certain ages right and then now they say that this mature tag is in its current stage right it's clearly optional and unenforced and used by you know relatively like other streamers like let's say it's like a gambling thing or gamba thing or when it's let's say for example some other people who are in the pools you know riding a dill pickle i don't know but this there is a proposed new iteration of mature tag that would come with some stricter enforcement and it may allow certain streamers about freedom to stream a more suggestive content so under the new policy which would essentially create okay and hear me hear this out it would create an after dark kind of like category which would still be heavily be regulated by many of twitch's current rules regarding sexual content streamers now under this mature category would still not be able to like broadcast you know anything that's sexual suggestive like masturbation you know sex and content implying those things right but under those guidelines twitch admits that while there's like content that doesn't technically infringe any of the standing rules it would clarify like some of the contents that would fall under it it's like there's the sex health education content there's the discussion for sexual topics or experiences there's the performing you know there's the performing fetish content like body riding and feet webcams <laughs> and then it's like gr- the grouping of own one's own body prolonged kiss targeted at the camera facial expression you know associated with sexual arousal and then you know 
it's like sexually explicit camera flirt camera framing you know my chat would love the next one because you know they like this suggestive dancing including lap and pole dancing oh yeah that's my favorite yeah you know like you know just turn on any random korean streamers they're dancing pog band sexually implicit art or art rather titles con channel texts or overlays with sexual content and content encouraging more mature conversation in conversations in chat you know while unconfirmed dude they're actually making it you know it the tag would make it less discoverable to twitch users and you know we'll see how it goes they haven't made a potential update to this but yeah dude i mean i don't know i think something like this could be good if it's being promoted and push the right users if there's like um right now like the recommended channels uh, category we talked about it a little bit last stream uh -huh. but that thing is working really well like i was finding streamers um that I just like find in chats and talk to that I didn't know streamed. And I would like to know if those people stream for sure. Yeah. So like it's working great. Now, if they could just do that with this after dark section, push push it to the right people, the right users, you know, users of, of age, then I think it could work great. But if you alienate this after dark section of Twitch, mm -hmm. then, then it will kill content and it will kill the, the streamers. For sure, like streamers will not want to create content if they're not getting as much views while streaming in app in this like after dark type section. Yeah, because honestly, okay, and hear me out. It would be, it would might sound kind of like base or something, but I think there's a room or there's a world where Twitch could actually regard after dark streamers really good. One part of it is you know one part of it of being cool in the mature you know in that mature tag is they're actually a little bit you know opening up some sort of things right let's say for example talking about more mature content right and i think that it you know it just feels that there's a room on twitch that we could find, you know, I don't, I won't say ne like negotiation, but like a middle ground of sorts where number one, when we, when we talk about things that say, for example, like sexual education, right. Or like people, I mean, technically it's 21 plus content, like, you know, education about like drugs, we weed and or other things right i think there's a room for it as long as it's like properly moderated because think about this way right when did people discovered actual porn and i tr trust me trust me it's gonna a lot of people will will say that they've either discovered it around nine years old to like 13 or like 15 years old and you know, under Ramadan, okay, please, I apologize for hearing porn, you know, I, 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 I already, you know, haram, um, haram, I, I apologize, boys, but, dude, think about it this way, it's, some, sometimes it's already out there, and the more you censor it to, like, other people, the more that, you know, that people would actually get curious about it, so, you know, at the very least, I mean, yes, people take let's let's be honest, people take education on Twitch pretty seriously. <laughs> like, let's be honest, you know, people, you know, people that were you know on that kind of like ages would think, you know, I want to be more educated about streaming, so I'm a watch X. You know this certain streamer she's doing like mature content boom and then you know usually what would pop out is like you know advices or like you know some other dating kind of thing thing like those things and you're a minor and you're you don't know you know you're in 
interested in your high school, you know, growth, you know, you wanted to have a girl in high school and it seems that they're they're not related to you, but you're actually related. I'm I'm kidding, okay. I'm <laughs> I'm kidding. Hell yeah, yeah brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn right. But <laughs> hell yeah, brother. Damn right. Here in America. No. But hell like yeah. But on the on those kinds of things, honestly honestly, if Twitch becomes like more educated on let's say even like languages, right? Because you know, people use sorts of like languages that we've either come across, you know, in school, but like Twitch streamers unironically, you know, sp explains it better. Dude, I, I just feel that there's a room for the After Dark stuff. Even, even, yes, yes, I know people don't like it, but like, you know, even the Gamba stuff, there's actual room for it because there's actually people who are, instead of gatekeeping it, right, they want to, like, educate people. And that's where I'm at, is if it produces, you know, less harm for the audiences, then why not, right? Why not? I yeah. Mean, so, yeah. That's just me, though. Yeah, I think... I think uh when they started Twitch or even um, Justin TV, they just had like a certain goal in mind and definitely with Twitch, it, it, it um, transformed into something that was a strictly a gaming platform. But I think they're starting to realize that Twitch is just becoming a, a huge platform for everything. And that there's been amazing content creators in all avenues. Um, so it, it, it'll definitely be nice to see them, you know, make the move to diversify uh, Twitch for sure. I just, um, you know, I, I, I have concerns about like, like really um, extreme content. You know what I mean? Like um, some of the stuff that YouTube has faced, yep. you know, during their early days. So um, if you don't know what I mean, you know, like, you know, terrible stuff. Terrible yeah, videos, also. very terrible um, videos, and there, there's been there's been terrible streams too on Twitch. But like um, with this after dark section, I'm just scared that something might uh, pass, like some of the bots, you know, uh, you know, checking like you know the content and and whatnot, or, or, or even like the reports and allowing some like mm -hmm. really bad bad content. But you know, it is what it is. We'll see how it works. I mean, um, I think I, if they're working with Amazon, they have some really good, um, you know, they got some really good algorithms over there that they can probably put in use. So we'll yeah. see. I mean, to be fair, Twitch already promoted, you know, porn in the platform by that boost feature. What else could go wrong, right? Sure, surely not. Nothing goes wrong, right? Surely, surely. <laughs> but but on one on one end. I'm I'm a pro education person, you know, as much as, you know, you I mean, I believe teach them while they're young, so, you know, while they grow older, they'll be able to like adapt to it and then when somebody asks, they, they'll actually know, right? But I'm also on the other end that yes, there's potential harm into it in terms of like the advertisement, right? Because, you know, yeah. let's be honest, the amount, or not the amount, rather, but the ads, let's say, for example, you know, a big streamer gets, I also get, right? So if a big streamer gets, let's say, for example, you know, a condom ad, just for example, right? I also get the condom ad, you know, or let's say, for example, if someone just, let's say, for example, gets a bet, you know, bet, 365.com ad, you know, on their, on their end, I also get it, right? Also not, you know, not advertising it, okay? Don't, please don't gamble, you will lose, okay? But other than that, I mean, there's, there's a form of, like, after dark that's healthy, but that it just, you know, everything in moderation is fine. So, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, there's a form of moderation 
but we already know Twitch moderation is sucks, so good luck with it. I was just say if it's the same moderation that constantly bans people, unbans them, and then rebans them, then you know we're probably gonna have a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's like Houston, we have a problem. You you know what I mean? It's kind of like that, you know, kind of like those vibes that it gives me, because not only not only does it give like kind of like those vibes, but dude, think about it this way: if if the Twitch moderation does that. Dude, basically what would happen is the platform will kind of like be doomed because it, you know, I mean, it, yes, the, the system favors some other streamers. I, I agree. But on one end, you know, if, as long as they're educating like people, then, you know, what's the harm into it? And, you know, they bring you money, you know, but I know it's kind of unfair, but yeah, dude, I mean... That's kind of like yeah. that to it. Yeah, I think there needs to be some a sort of responsibility from Twitch's side on like the gambling section and stuff. I think they sh they could do a better job of uh, letting um, the viewers and and even the streamers know how they can get help if they feel um, addicted to gambling, right? Which ends up being mostly the case. Um, so yeah, like because the, the the content can be entertaining, um, especially if you're a banana frog. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, bon uh, bonus, 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 seaweed, seaweed, seaweed. I don't know. Can you play Razor Shark? <laughs> <laughs> can you actually play Dual Dual? That that that. You know, that yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, because th there's a uh, form that's actually healthy, but you just need to, you know not commit commit the same mistakes that the moderation actually did or actually does because on one end there are some things that are fine and yes there are some things in the platform that needs to be cleaned but you know if it's for the education part then i'm all for it yeah yeah but speaking of twitch you know the other thing that they actually did? It's like Twitch updates DMCA communication and VOD settings. So in an email, it you know, Twitch gave its users, you know, notice to the platform on how it updates, you know, and communicates, you know, copyright detections as well as how it would affect the VODs. Cool. Mm -hmm. And DMCA strikes they say would be you know it's kind of like the most prevalent obstacle for like content creators on twitch but the platform has altered you know methods to protect and notify you know people for their offenses but now twitch will now send both an email notification and a notification on its actual mev website if it detects mm -hmm audio in any user's VODs, that is. So they would notify and they would provide a link to the associated VODs for users to review. And VOD associated copyright content, they say now, will continue to be automatically muted, though the VOD itself will not be deleted. Clips pertaining to potential copyright offenses will now be erased. And in this new update as well, after multiple instances of copyrighted audio detection, Twitch, uh, Twitch now actually will allow or will automatically rather set users' VODs to go unpublish. So on one end, it's actually pretty good because, I mean, at least there's some form of like update, but like on the other end, it still doesn't solve the DMCA problem, which is a, a rule that was, you know, it was done like years ago, if not like 40 years, it's like more than 30 years. And it ha and since the boom and, you know, audio streaming platforms, it has to be updated. And, you know, if, and to accommodate, you know, Twitch, and other VOD review products as well, Twitch has to acknowledge that there's an actual DMCA problem, right? And 
it still not, not, does not solve like any kind of like other problems that we have. Also, you know, just a, just an, just as an aside, rather, if you're looking for free, you know, for free electronic music that's DMCA free, feel free to do or feel free to follow some of the people that actually, you know, the that actually does good DMCA free music. One one that I could recommend, and I will be honest with you, I recommend some of his music. It's so less composer that you could go to like Twitch, and you know, he's on Spotify as well as Nightingale Lo-Fi. You know, you could use his music as well. And the other one that you could use is, you know, that I that I don't have any ties by the way, but you know, I, I'm not sponsored. Is Kubo Music? You know. He does like free electronic music that's DMCA or that's DMCA free. So you could do that. And, you know, if you read, if you guys really need, you know, to play a music and that's always free to use, no, D no DMCA, you know, just head to those two and they'll, they'll actually, you know, allow you to use their music. But anyway, what kind of music is it though? That's it, what it says. Dude, Solas does, does like banger stuff. He does some of some Elden Ring, Final Fantasy inspired like m music, which is actually cool, right? And like some ambient type shit. Yeah, and then so, some other stuff. Let's say you know, if you're into a little bit of like, you know, you wanted to have like an Asian feel into it, Kubo music is for you. Because some of like what he does is a little bit on the those kind of things, where Solas sometimes it's fitting for him to do like more of the, you know, the Final Fantasy medieval stuff. So yeah, I mean, though, That's it. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other people that actually does, you know, electronic music that's DMCA free. So you know. But then again, going back to the topic, you know, ha not not a hashtag ad, by the way, you know, they don't pay me for anything, but, you know, those are just some of my friends that do that. But yeah, like, DMCA copyright strikes, you know, mitigating it is actually just, like, insane. Because if you're Twitch, right, I mean, you would want your streamers to play the music that they like. Yes, that's really true, you know. But on one end, you also press with another problem, which is the music industry that's kind of a little bit bigger than you. So like what would you what would you do, right? So you know, you're pressed with that, but at least have some form of like a mediation that okay, so let's say for example, if I if I use Sony related tracks, you know, I could use them, let's say for a certain amount of time. You, you know, like those kinds of things. So hopefully yeah. there's a form of reconciliation into this. I think a good solution to all this is um I I think we talked about, about Tanami before. Yeah. Uh, you were in my stream earlier when I was checking it out. Yeah. Tools like that are really yeah. like paving the way of how we can probably solve this DMCA issue by just having users connect their account. And they won't be able to hear the music or or view what you're viewing unless they connect their account and and view it with you. Because at the end of the day, how how is this different than picking up your friend and playing your favorite music in mm -hmm. the car and then listening with you? What's so different about having your family over and watching a movie together? Like it's uh, are are you gonna go into the house and try to DMCA strike the guy playing the movie? No. Yeah. Like I think we need to solve this uh, within the internet age with modern technology, like like we're doing, and create some tools um, for the users like this, man. And I think a matter of time is going to get that way. Um, we'll see. But yeah, right now it's it's a whole clusterfuck with the uh, with the industry is just trying to get their bag. No, no party is happy except for them, and, they, and even them, they're probably not even that happy. They have to fill out all this paperwork and. And deal with in lawyers and stuff, but at the end of the day, they're the ones getting paid. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you know, all people deal with lawyers, and good luck dealing with them because it's pretty rowdy out there. 
right? Yeah, so, the lawyers are going to drain you too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dude, the only thing that I could, you know, I mean, this is not like an immediate like fix, but one thing, and I always tell this to like other people, right? And I told this to like one partner streamer and, you know, he sometimes for, forget like how, to, you know, not, not necessarily how to do it, but specifically let's say for example the ways around right so one the only way that i you know because if you visit my stream right it's pretty recently it it was you know pretty disco-y and i think two months ago it's it was pretty k-poppy so you know if you go to my stream but like i i'm able to like play some of the things that i actually like so one thing that you know, I uniquely do on my stream is if I want to use Spotify, right? I split the audio that I'm sending on stream to Twitch and as well as Spotify. So basically, if if you're a streamer or, you know, if you're a smaller streamer or if you're a big streamer who doesn't know this, please pay attention because this might save your channel. So this is... You know, this is not like a live, you know, DMCA free thing. You know, it's a VOD DMCA free thing. But if someone, let's say, for example, clips like your certain part of your stream, what you could do is you could split the audio from, you know, let's say, for example, what you're hearing from Spotify to your stream. So at least it sends like two signals. One is like your microphone signal and let's say, for example, the game kind of like signal, right? Or the game audio and your audio, like your mic. And then the other is your Spotify playing. So basically, it plays the Spotify on stream, but on the VOD, you won't be able to like hear it. And it's a pretty easy fix. You know, you can just search it online, right? There's a lot of like YouTube videos made for it using voice meter banana. So, you know, if you really want to, you could do that. And, you know, that that's what I suggest you do if, you know, you really like playing a lot or lots and lots of, like, DMCA music. So, yeah. Yeah. I recommend Potato if you want, like, like a lot of customization with it. You can get, like, a lot more virtual cables, I think, on there, too. Potato. On, uh, the Potato version. Yeah, I think you have to pay for it, though. I don't know. Yeah. So... Instead of, like, not necessarily, like, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm stuck with, like, this blah, 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 blah. If you want to, you could play certain, like, music using that. So, yeah, it's completely up to you. It's your channel, you know, your role. So, ultimately, you know, I'm we're only here to, like, discuss that it's free from, like, DMCA if you do that from, like, your live vlog. So, yeah. Um, it, it, it doesn't protect you from manual review processes, mm -hmm. um, but um, it's probably unlikely that you got like a universal employee in your stream yeah. checking you out. But I mean, if you're an XQC, you're going to get hit pretty quick. Yeah, because one, one partner streamer, um, which, by the way, he would be a guest next week. So there's that. So, you know. Who is it? I already announced it on my stream, but like post champ, it's alt, so he'll be guessing on stream next week. So, dude, like once, Let's this, go. yeah, for for one week, you know, to totally unpaid, you know, totally, I didn't oil him or anything for it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, dude, honestly, like he was doing some um stream playlist and then you would just see his stream you know from like a or a two ago i think that it's clearly it has like those muted chunks you know also if anyone doesn't know okay if anyone doesn't know just being plainly muted audio doesn't mean dmca strike okay please please because I know, a, dude, 
I've encountered this with a lot of like normie moderations, and some of them actually ask me if it's like an actual DMCA. Please, 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 it's not a live DMCA thing. Okay, it's not a live. D it's not a DMCA thing. Twitch has a automated system that does that. Okay, so you know. Anyway, so he has like huge chunk of like muted audio. So what I suggest him a while ago, by a while ago this morning was if he wants to like split it. So yeah, you know, I mean, there's some ways around it. There's some ways that you could, you could again, you know, feel free to like use Solas composers or, you know, Nightingale Lo-Fi or Kubo Music on Spotify, right? But other than that, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like things you could use. So, yep. Just be smart. Yeah. <laughs> Forehead. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean, this is the last kind of like topic that we're going to talk about, I guess. But if, there, if you know, anything else, the floor is kind of like open. So, you know, Narcissa Wright, by the way. Anyone does, doesn't know Narcissa Wright, you know, on Twitch. Dude, basically, what happened was... So a couple of weeks ago, what happened was, you know, there was an NSFW thing that was flashed on her channel. And then, she, you know, she got a permaband, of course. And then after that, she tweeted something along the lines of self-harm and threatening, not just self-harm, but like threatening Twitch HQ employees, okay, and, you know, other site evasion, other site ban evasions, dude, now she's actually permabanned, basically, because, ow, okay, let's fix this timeline, right? She did an NSFW stuff, she appealed it, she appealed it, but before she appealed it, she actually threatened self-harm and the, the Twitch HQ. She got like a 22 day suspension instead. She went live a couple of days ago and then, you know, she was, fr she was free. And then other people reacted to it that, you know, some people actually do more outrageous stuff and they got perma. She does one outrageous stuff and she didn't get perma, you know, a hey, Twitch. Well, good job promoting her, I guess, but. Other than that, now she's permed. So I mean, other than that, man, like I I don't know because this platform is now an actual kind of like joke. Because now that I think of it, it it's kind of like hard on one end that yo, you're doing that like this kinds of like content, right? And you try on other people's lives, basically. And other people could have gone into jail because yeah. of, like, things you did online. But now, but then, like, people think that, you know, her, because of not being permanent, there was, like, outrageous reactions... And then now that they that Twitch got called out for it, and you know, Twitch, as per usual, got their hands caught in a cookie jar. Now they actually promoted her. So you, you know, it's actually pretty annoying that this happens because one, if you really want to keep, you know, if you really want to keep this platform clean, please, please, and please. And this one thing I'm begging Twitch, like be consistent on what you say or and what you do, because you know it's really important. Number two, aside from being consistent, motherfuckers, think about like what people do to the platform. Some some people could say outrageous shit and they got permanent, but you know this person didn't get permanent. Like, yeah, that. Total standards? Come on, man. This is total... This is 
bordering lines. Actually, it's not bordering lines. It's actually in the lines of like double standards nowadays. So, you know, I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes, but like, good luck. Um, other than that, you know, yeah, I mean, that. That's a weird situation, man. Like this, uh, her threatening to like shoot and kill people at Twitch headquarters is is crazy. And like, man, I bet those Twitch employees were not feeling safe working. Yeah. You know, and uh, I bet they were out- outraged when they heard that Twitch made these decisions to unban her. <laughs> yeah, and then. And then once that, I, I guarantee once that like risen in the company that, you know, employees were pissed that felt like their life was threatened. They're like, you know what, we're probably going to have to reban her. And it's like, well, think about it. The banning isn't going to help you guys. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to help this person. This person is off the rockers and you guys should probably report to the story. This is no longer a Twitch thing. Stop banning people mm-hmm. and thinking that's going to help anything. It's not going to help anything at all in this situation. This is a really unique situation that needs to be handled differently. And PERMA should definitely be... Uh, I think the PERMA is the right choice, first off. Mm-hmm. Uh, this person needs to get help, and they shouldn't be on Twitch. Maybe they're, like, too obsessed with Twitch right now, you know? Um, so I think PERMA is the right step, but, like, yeah, they, they, they're all over the place. They're unbanning, rebanning. W- w- what's going on? Who's making the decisions? Are, are you guys getting together and, and and having these conversations with your actual employees, or are you just having one guy uh, dictate everything? Like, come on. Yeah, because let's be honest, right? Regardless of how you appeal with it, regardless of how you, you know, you apologize for it, of, like, troubling people, not just their livelihoods, by the way, Trailing people with their livelihoods, it's different with trailing them with their lives. And you have to be so cautious in regards to people, you know, saying things specifically on Twitch. But you also have to keep watch what they actually say outside of Twitch once they're banned. Because it ha- it has to be consistent. Because... Believe me, some people get messed up when they are banned on the platform. Yes, but some some people will feel outrage and then will say, "Hey, uh, le- le- let me just like you know go f myself, and then you know I'll threaten you guys too." So you know that like that's the most not just annoying thing that happened, but it's really bothersome that we have a platform like this so you know do do we know if twitch did like report this person to the authorities or like do like a a checkup on them or something because uh, what's it called um what you call like you call the authorities about like someone that's being suicidal i forgot it's like there's a name for it yeah Uh, like a wellness check that's what it is a wellness check like I want to know about that. I don't care about the ban. Like th- this is this is crazy shit. And like, man, your employees are in danger. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy crap, dude. Man, I would not be. I would not feel safe working at HQ. Definitely. I, I almost guarantee no one is working at HQ. Probably most people are working from home. But yeah. Yeah. It, like, it's not actually like that. I, no, I wouldn't say not that. Verified on Twitter too. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's like imagine having like this uh Twitter thing when you know, hey, uh, I I need to like tweet this and blah 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 blah. But dude, like, what would you do when people say those things outside of your platform, right? If they could say that outside of your platform what more could they say inside of your platform you know what i mean they're already outside basically they're already outside of your platform but now you're allowing them to come back no dude 
that's not allowed. Like, that's highly illegal and annoying. W- within a short time frame, too. Like, nothing has changed within 22 days. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It seems like there wasn't much discussion on that, and they just went on impulse with this decision, and that just looks so amateurish. And it, it really shows the... the um, the immaturity of the company, right? Because it is a, a young company, very young, very early. Yeah, because uh, into, on into one, this industry. On one end, like I understand, like if person is remorseful or regretful of what they did, that's one of it. But like, if a person actually, I hope. I don't like using religious terms, but, like, if they actually repented towards, like, what they did, like, they would actually be able to, like, you know, you would actually see the change. But, unfortunately, there wasn't that much of a change that they did, so what do what would they do now, right? So, I don't know, dude. It's actually, like, insane to me that, you know, there are those kinds of people that is on the platform, so, I don't know, man. We'll see. But yeah, it just, it just feels pretty weird because on one end, you know, we want to have a safe platform. On the other end, we want everyone to be able to like stream and say whatever they want. But of course, just because, you know, hell yeah, brother, I got that freedom. You know, you, you know, that's not. And enough evidence. Every, everyone needs to be responsible on what they say. You know, whether you're on the, on the podcast, whether you're just on, ch- on just chatting, whether you're on the platform, whether you're off the platform, whether you said you're you're twelve and you Twitch chat and you got banned, you're still gonna be responsible for what you say. Also, please, please don't say don't say, don't say I'm twelve on Twitch chat. You'll get initially banned, and it's a hard process. Trust me. Because I've learned, I've heard someone that got banned, and you have to actually, you know, have yourself identified as, you know, a non twelve user. So good, good luck. But yeah, I wonder what else goes in that. Like, do you think they get your ID so they could do like a little background check, make sure you're not like a sex offender or something? Because yeah, probably. That's what I think. That's why I think like uh, that's automated in just to you know, yeah, ban weirdos immediately because man, there are you got to think there are a lot of kids on this platform and there there's gonna be some motherfuckers that are like lying about their age and and being weird in the DMs and stuff. So yeah, don't yeah. don't lie about your age on Twitch chat. It's it's they're checking now. They're watching. <laughs> yeah, that the, that's why when I you know, I mean technically if you're an affiliated streamer. Right? If you're an affiliated streamer, hey, they either leak how much you make or they already have your pretty much everything on you. So good luck. <laughs> They've already said, let's say, for example, oh, hey, uh, this is actually your secure, you know, your SIN, your pretty much, you know, address, and we could probably dox you, you know, you know but, you know, it, it's an actual insane thing where you need to find an actual not not just automation but like the moderation doesn't have to happen like a bot thing like yes there's all like streamers on the platform there's one almost 1 million of you know streamers on the platform and even like you know 700,000 of those are of you know affiliated so or not 7,000 Seven hundred thousand is affiliated, so you you know like good good luck with that, because I mean, at this certain age, we have to be you know, I I know this is gonna be like back. It's gonna create a lot of backlogs and good luck on the Twitch employee that handles this because it's gonna be toxic as hell. But <laughs> if there's a person, actual person handling like bans and things. It would have been easier. So, you know. I mean, why why do you think that if you get banned on like an Apex thing or 
in League of Legends, you know, what? why do you think if you get banned, they only show chat logs? Not the actual way of why you said it or the context of it. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, uh, is there anything else that we forgot or that we kind of want to touch on? Uh, oh no, did you like the uh, r slash place meta going on on Twitch? I'll be honest with you. R slash place is actually one of, if not, it's actually one of the most exciting things that I've ever done. Yes, yes, I I understand it's just pixels. Yes, I understand that you're just you know, that you're just putting tiles on certain a certain Reddit. Yes, I do understand that. But for some people, right, they have the thrill of it and you see people coming together as a community yo hey i think you know we need to like align ourselves you know with spain or with france you know or some sort of like country to like do some stuff so so do some things rather but i actually like it just because i see other streamers popping off on like not just reddit but people coming in together that actually don't watch Twitch at all. I just think, though, I just think that some people take it too far. That, you know, some I know some people who actually got banned on r slash place. I know some people who've, you know, been actually been hatred and almost got canceled. So, you know, I mean, yes, it's all for fun and it's all tiles, but don't take it a little too far. Yeah, you know. that's crazy. Yeah, for four Dude. days too. It's not even like you know a whole week for four days. If it was a whole week, that would have been better. Yeah, I I was uh, pretty neutral. I didn't watch too much of the content, but like I've got like a couple clips here and there. Yeah, it seemed pretty cool, man. The the collaboration and like the like the community driven part of it was really sick. Yeah, um, I think we need more of that in this world. Definitely in this day and age, we're all like. Um, divided in this world so like we, we definitely need more of that um i i saw something really positive uh do, do you watch the streamer empire or it was emp or something yeah i used uh, to but not too much because time slot and he's from australia so good luck yeah. with that time slot <laughs> he he found huge success in our slash place um with like the Russian community, which mm. was sick to see, is like that. I just seen a, a ton of positive that just like outweighs the negative parts of it, and that that is just like we need more meta, more of that meta going on, man. Um, yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. We also found like you know, if some people from Russia don't actually like that, you know, they're the alliance or those kinds of things you know me and some people in his offline chat just spammed cocks and they and then they went away <laughs> it's like we spammed like kirby flex cocks that's why if you if you go to my twitch chat and then you know now there's like a kirby flex emote it's actually pretty cool so yeah <laughs> Dude, yeah. yeah, it's it's just like it's so sick to see um like like stuff like that happen. Um Yeah, I mean honestly, you know, that's partly also why I'm inviting Australian streamers because number one, I love to collaborate with everyone around the world. You know, if you're from Antarctica, you know, you live with polar bears, penguins, and probably, you know, other other people like sea lions or some some other things please dm me or go to my twitch channel you know deposit your twitch primes or even at, even just say hey i'm from antarctica i would love to be on your podcast i'll get you in okay no cap but like that's why i like collaborating with other people as well so yeah i mean you know it's actually pretty insane that this is happening so hopefully you know we get like more and more people collaborating and 
I actually like those four days because they're also one of the things that they collaborated with is with, you know, the rectal image. Yeah, they did. They actually did a rectal image and, you know, in memory of rectal who, you know, ev everyone knew, you know, passed away and made a huge influence on Twitch. So, you know, hopefully everything, you know, Hopefully the community comes more to like more causes like this. You know, if we can get, you know, people, you know, collaborate with tiles, what more and other aspects, right? So, you know, I mean it is what it is, but yeah. Other than that, uh what else happened on Twitch that we could talk about? Because we we could there's all things that, you know, that that we could actually talk about dude you know we i mean we could talk about one of the things it's like vr or like you know the anime avatar thing is actually popping off which if yeah. you if anyone doesn't know you know iron mouse is actually like popping off and that's actually pretty cool because you know if people if people actually like you know, if people actually like those kinds of like things, then it's actually pretty insane because, and I told this to one of like, you know, those, I told this to one pe other people that, Hey, there's a kind of thing where there's a world, there's a world where VR chat or VTubers is actually cool. Like if you want to do it, then do it. But yeah, I mean, for me. It's, I mean, personally, I, I would admit it's not for me, but if you like it, then go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to say the least. <laughs> I, I've, uh, dove into VR chat a couple times and it's just like, I feel like it's just good for like content really. Like, it, I don't know, like I, I wouldn't go in there seriously wanting to, yeah, like, talk to people and stuff but other people do so it would, you know no okay shame. would you like, <laughs> would you e-date on vtuber chat no shot dude <laughs> no shot. wait okay i, I wait, mean are you in a relationship by the way or no i'm not i'm single okay both made on list but so yeah <laughs> no no but like you know you know like in one of the ways possible right in one of the ways really possible, one of the things that I could actually see coming is, I mean, yes, you know, the Namers or the Weaves, as you know, I mean, if they could have a world where, and it's actually healthy because there's a different thing that we're, we're seeing, right? Because a lot of people would, you know, hey, uh, show your face or show feet, blah, 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 or the hot tub stream, blah, 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 but you know, there's an actual market for this and people are actually tapping this and th that's another world. So dude, it's actually pretty cool that, you know, this is happening and v VTubers is going to be a thing for a while. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you see a future where we're living most of our lives in VR or not at all? In Trainwreck's words, or train train wreck okay train train i i like you please please don't cancel me for saying train wrecks okay oh, i said train wrecks yeah i did so in train wreck words dude we we already live in a shit world why would they go into a shitty world y you know what i mean so hey i mean to be fair you know if you really want to like let you know, live your life in a VR chat and do that as a pastime, okay, and a career, then sure. But, like, I don't see myself diving into it that much. Number one, you know, I don't have that uwu voice, you know. How how would they even say uwu? Uh, uh, uh? It's like, hey, uh, hi, my name is Frank, uh, uwu. Uh. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It, it's not gonna be like that kind of thing but you know we'll see 
I mean, have you have you done VR chat? No, and I won't. I or I mean, it, it's you don't have to be an anime character. Like you could be like a Giga some, Chat. Yeah, you could be like some meme shit. Like there's a ton of avatars in the world. It's just that the majority of them are anime avatars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, at the end of the day, right? It is what it is. You know, you got to do some stuff. And yeah. Have you heard about the sex stuff going on in VR, in VR chat? Though? Wait, that there is? is? That shit is crazy. Yeah, there's a, they get like sex toys where like it communicates with like the other users. So like whatever, like I think it's like a glove or something. So like whatever they do on your avatar in VR chat, the glove like touches you and like does stuff to you. Wait, so there's actual groping in VR chat, dude. That's insane. Yeah, dude, it's out there. I got I gotta look at like the exact devices that are. I mean, not because I'm gonna get them or anything, but just for the research, right? Just so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, and um, yeah. I want to see what it's all about. I'll, I'll link it to you. Uh. No, I don't think so. If and then we can meet up, and then we can meet up in there later, after I send you know. I mean, if, I mean, if I would VR as Barry, maybe it's believe believable. You know, I'll just do an O2 dance. I don't know. Yeah, man. I could do a Barry avatar. I could do a Barry avatar. <laughs> I mean, huh? What? Oh, what you're thinking about it? What would? Okay, what what would be your avatar if you went to like VR chat? Dude, I right now it's just like some random thing I found in in a world where it's like a it looks like a it looks like a dead mouse character. I don't know. Yeah, like you know, dead mouse with their big ass head. It looks like one of those. But um, I, don't, I haven't found a cool avatar. I, I was kind of this like forearm, uh, buff, uh, handsome Squidward. You know, handsome Squidward, the meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was that for a little while just because I found it randomly, but yeah. Yeah, maybe I would do, if that was me, I might. You could do yourself, actually. You can make your own avatars, by the way. I would do a Giga Chat avatar. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Honestly. G Giga Chat avatar, you know, you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, that's it for the podcast. I mean, Rare Podcast <laughs> episode 33. Watch out for next week. We have all, and we also have Crypt. C. So, hey, cre creaky streamers, you know, we we love Australia so much that they actually lost to actual emus. So, hey, props to everyone that's, you know, that's on the podcast. And, yeah, I mean, that's almost my, I mean, that was my streamer anniversary podcast going to be. I mean, technically this is, but, yeah. We're going to talk about stream my streamer anniversary, so that would be cool. So, yeah. Everyone, thanks for being podcast. Thanks for listening. And, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Peace. Laters.